Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we're really just building on this what we've been covering with the addition and subtraction algorithms. Let's take a look at this. It says which of the following is the best way to set up the expression 76 minus 55 hundredths. Yes, that's how you read that number, 55 hundredths. I know a lot of you guys are used to saying 0.55 or 0.55. Um, I won't ding you for it, but it doesn't uh, make a lot of sense. Um, so 55 hundredths. In order to perform the subtraction algorithm, uh, justify your answer. So we're trying to perform the standard subtraction algorithm, the one they taught you way back in second, third grade. And I know you guys are used to it. You start going vertical, you line up numbers. Problem is I have a lot of students who line this up really weird. In fact, in a typical GED class, I might have um, a student who does any of these three uh, lineups here, and I'm wondering which is the best way. So the first thing that I'd like to say is when you're subtracting, you need to make sure that the number, can I, just, let, me, let me rephrase that. When you're performing the subtraction algorithm, uh, where we put one number on the top and one number on the bottom, you know, like old school 57 minus 32 kind of stuff. When you're doing that in your side work, you are going to need to put the number with the greatest value up top, the number with the greatest value. So let's examine these two numbers, not the longest number now, the one that's worth the most. So you tell me what's worth most, 76 or 55 hundredths? Well, of course, 76 is worth more not because it's longer or not because seven's bigger than five, but because uh, seven tens and six ones is so much more than this 55, five tenths and five hundredths is just an itty bitty little thing like comparing $76 to 55 cents. So I will make sure that we have one where the 76 is on the top and the 55 is on the bottom. So I'm going to rule out this number. Okay. So I'm glad if you ruled out that number, most students do, but the problem is the most common wrong answer I get now in GED class is all these students who tell me, but Kate, Kate, the algorithm requires me to line up at the right, and so I should line up my work this way. And I say, I don't know what your third grade math teacher taught you, but that's a lie. That's not what the algorithm requires. Since the beginning of math, since we started adding and subtracting, we've only ever been able to add the same kinds of things. And when we're talking kinds of things in the land of decimals, we're talking a place value, place value. So you're going to need to make sure that tens line up with tens and ones line up with ones and tenths with tenths and hundredths with hundredths and so on. Well, this particular particular number, 0 0.55, has zero in the ones place. Um, the ones place is always right left of the a decimal place. And then this number has a six in the ones place. So I could line these two up at my ones place. So the best way to line this guy up would be to line up these ones places like this. So this is the proper lineup. Now, that's all the question asked me. Which one is the proper lineup and justify your answer? So it's that last one, uh, C, if you will, or the last one. And why? Because the place values line up. We can only add and subtract when the place values line up. But that being said, I will complete this problem because a lot of people still screw it up from there. So let's think about this top number up here. It has some implied digits, whether you realize it or not. It's a whole number 76, so the decimal place would fall right there. And of course, if you see no number in the tenths place, how many tenths do we have? We have no tenths. And how many hundredths do we have? We have no hundredths. So if I actually wanted to perform the subtraction and not just... Um, uh, answer this question here, I would have to replace those blanks with zeros. And then that would allow me to say, well, I can't take five from zero, so I'm going to have to come over here to the first non-zero number and borrow. In that place, I'll go down uh, to five. Borrowing one from a place on the left will bring up the place to the right up 10. And so that zero goes up to a 10. So now I have the power to borrow from this guy. He'll go down by one down to 9, and the next one will go up by 10, up to 10, and now I can subtract. 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 5 is 4, 5 minus 0 is 5, and 7 minus nothing down there is 7. And so if I were to perform this subtraction, it would be 75.45. But once again, the best way to set up the expression would be this one. Why? Because my place values were lined up. 
If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.